Jigarith. It was written once in a deep mystical book that until you stand in the infinite and in the eternal, you cannot know oneness. That only when the mind and the heart and the consciousness rest on the space of the infinite and on the time of the eternal can liberation take place. You see, what happens is even just looking at time. What does it mean in your everyday life? Tension, stress, neurosis. That's what time means. It doesn't mean anything else. (laughs) It's, it's, It's obviously not really there. You break up the infinite moments, the eternal moments, into small pieces and then get uptight about the fact that the next one's coming and you're not ready. It's all mind. It's just mind does that. What you do with time is get uptight. And it's not just having deadlines and having to do things and pressures and what time creates. There's also the sense, bigger, that's what you do with your moment to moment, hour to hour within a day. Time does that. Just think about how much time does. You don't know. Make believe it went away. There was no time during the day. You can't even comprehend such a thing. That's how much time runs your life. Bigger is, think of bigger spans of time that engulf more of your lifetime, more of your child years, teenage years, college years, growing up years, so on, these little blocks of time, 10, 20 years, where you see your stages, do it that way, the time and the stages of your life. What does it do then? Always the same thing. Always the same thing what? I might miss something. Time is passing me by. That's a good thing? Time is passing me by? No. People don't say that as a good thing. That's not a good expression. Oh boy, time is passing me by. Time is passing me by means there's something to get and that something to get is within time and I'm not getting it. And the clock's ticking and next thing I know that's how people have midlife crises. A midlife crisis is exactly what I'm talking about. It's like all of a sudden you look and time's freaking you out, but not the moment-to-moment, hour-to-hour, appointment-level time, but your lifetime. And you sit there and say, well, what am I doing in my life? I, I thought this was going to do it. I, I don't. And my God, I can't believe I'm halfway done. I can't believe I'm 40 years old. It's half done. What have I gotten? What have I done? And, oh, my God. And people go into midlife crisis. I think it's cute and adorable as a button. And then there are people who teach them what to do about it. But they don't teach them this, which is you're having a midlife crisis because you're dealing with time. There is no midlife crisis without time, just as there is no tension and anxiety during your everyday existence without time. Time creates the pressure of having to fit life within a segment that it may or may not fit in, right? And you've defined that it's supposed to fit in that. That's these little meters. It's amazing. It's amazing to look at. But bigger is what you do with your life, is that you think that you're going to miss something. You think that life has a limit. Time creates limitation. Because you break it into segments, there are limits. And when you start thinking that time is against you, that time is passing you by, and you haven't gotten what you want, you haven't found what you you're going to be sick. Time will make you sick. Time will destroy your life. When you start looking at time that way, you can't be happy. Why? All right, we go to Disney World or Epcot. They keep adding more and more things to do there. I can't imagine you could possibly go on all the rides or do all the things in a day. But let's say you're going for a day. So there you are. You think you're going to Disney World. You're not. You're going to time understand that. You're going into the world of time, not into the world of Disney. 
And when you get there, you're going to be uptight. Because there's so many different things to see, so many different experiences to have, and you so many rides to go on, and you only have this one day, a limited time. And so while you're waiting in line, you feel like you're wasting your time. While you're supposed to be enjoying the stuff that's in between the rides, you're running right by them because you have limited time. Limited time creates a very interesting phenomenon. And then, even if you're on a ride, forget that you're walking in between, forget that you're waiting in line, you actually get on one you wanted to go on. Uh Uh-uh. Not going to work. Why? Because you're thinking about what you're missing while you're on that ride. There are how many more do you have, or what could you have been on? And that's what people do even while they're experiencing their moments. The concept of limited time runs your life. And it destroys your life. That's what's so amazing. Yet, you don't talk about this. No one talks about this. It's just we're so ingrained in it. It's like That's like saying, well, why would you talk about what Earth would be like without gravity? It's it's, it's not real. No, no, you got it backwards. Earth has gravity. There is no time. Okay? you, You made that up. For me to make up what would it be like to live on Earth without gravity, I have to use my mind. For you to create this time problem, you have to use your mind. If you don't and you take reality, there is no time. There's just an infinite, I mean, usually an eternal continuum. But if it's eternal, it's not limited. And if there's no limit, how can you be uptight about it? That's the issue. And that's what it's talking about when it says you must live in the eternal. And I want you to listen to me. What does it mean to live in the eternal? It means, I gave you a nice foundation, it means exactly what I just talked about. It means there are no limits. There are no limits. You do not have limited days. You do not. You have an eternal number of days. Eternal. Do you understand that? You don't understand that if you think you're a human being. You don't understand that if you think you're your body. You don't understand it if you think you're so-and-so's husband or wife, or such-and-such's mother or friend, you do understand it if you know you're the self. If you know that you are the witness, you are the consciousness that is watching this thing. Where did it come from? How long has it been there? How long has this watching stuff been going on? Maybe it watched more than just you. (laughs) Right? In other words, what is the limit in time of the self? It has no biological functions. It can cross over birth and death. It doesn't make the slightest difference. It can leave this body. It doesn't have to be in here. It's just consciousness. When you start to relate to yourself as consciousness, and I'm not talking about some satori, some short little experience. We're talking about seasoned wine. Not that you had an experience of the self. It's not that you can talk about some merger that you had once or something like that. It's not a spiritual experience that you had. It's who you are. That's when you're seated in the self. It's not a place you go visit. It's the you who goes visits it. <laughs> right? There's no coming back from the self. And then that's not enough. Even that experience of sitting in witness consciousness does not yet create the fine aging I'm talking about, of the fine wines. Over time, time that gives you one amount of time that you sit in such a state and get used to such a state, but much more important, the mileage. The mileage, what does that mean? How many experiences you go through while you're in that state? I want some seasoning Show me the person who sat in the self through their marriage and they sat in the self through the divorce. They sat in the self through the childbirth, literally in the self during childbirth with all the pain and with all the things. Do you understand that? And they sat in the self when they were being mugged in New York and they sat in the self when they won the lottery. In other words, give me some mileage. Give me some meaningful events that test the temper of what's going on in there. That see, are you seated in the self? Or you kind of hang out on the edge and the first thing something comes around, good or bad, little bit, <laughs> you're out of there. 
So it takes that kind of seasoning. It means you went through it. So when you sit in the self, the consciousness, the witness, for prolonged periods of events, I won't call it time, for the mileage, all right, something happens that's more than just being the witness. Sure, it's good to wake up to the witness. Sure, it's good to know you're just in there watching and get outside the mind and not get all sucked into it. But when you sit there, stay there, age there for a prolonged time and seasoning, all of a sudden, and you don't know how or where, it's not anything you'll ever put your finger on, you will start to see that you have always been there. You do not think you've always been there. The same as you know that you're there, I've been through that with you. That one I can get everyone. You sure you're there? Mm. Yeah. (laughs) How do you know? I know that I know that I know. Right? I exist. I'm aware that I'm aware that I'm aware. Are you aware that you're aware that you're aware? That's really beautiful. You can't just say I'm aware. You have to say you're aware that you're aware. No, you're aware that you're aware that you're aware. Now you're getting it. You see the difference? Each more aware is seasoning. (laughs) You're going deeper into awareness. When you spend enough time there and you don't leave... And the don't leave just doesn't give you good time. It's not a matter of time. What it gives you is the depth that the human events can go through and they do not challenge your knowing yourself as self. So you watch that, it's just another human melodrama. So you watch that, it's another human melodrama. So you watch that, just another human thing that happens. But you're not anything. And eventually you're seasoned so deeply that you just realize that you have always been there. And that... There is no beginning or end to your experience. Your experience is simply, not thought, simply, the same as you are aware that you are aware that you're aware, you are aware that you have always been. That's all. It doesn't go into, and therefore, and what was I? It doesn't do that. That's coming back into mind. It's just aware that it's aware that it's aware and that it has always been aware. It's just the nature of self. Self knows its nature. Because you're sitting in it, you come to know its nature. You come to experience its nature. And so you know yourself as that which has always been. When that starts to happen, and it doesn't happen all at once, it doesn't have to. It just naturally is there, like the blossoming of a flower you start to realize what is, we started talking about eternity and time. If you have always been, then you will always be. Now that's nice to say, but when you actually start to live that way, then this whole thing about time goes away. If you have always been and you will always be, there is no lifetime. There is no limit. The problem with time is it created a sense of limit. And the sense of limit created tension. Both in the moments and the sense of limit created tension in terms of what are you doing with your life and what do you want to get done and what do you want to be. and you know, just That whole gig. In other words, the concept of limitation of time actually is a major part of the ego. And that's what that theosophical writing was trying to teach, what the mystical writing was trying to teach, is... In fact, I I think specifically it said this weed, this blot upon eternity, it was speaking about the psyche, the personal self, cannot exist in the eternal and in the infinite. In the environment of eternity and infinity, it can't exist. Limitedness creates the sense of ego. Because you think you're limited, you think there's something to do and you have to get it done and you're, you're busy. You're the one who's getting it done. <laughs> you're the one who's, who's utilizing this limited thing in some sort of fashion. You're trying to figure it out and do something with it and stay on top of it and decide what to do. It. That's your ego. So just the very notion of limitedness creates ego. And the opposite happens. When you start to let go of that and to realize The only time that matters to the self is eternity. 
period. Because it has always been and it will always be. In the light of that, where's ego? There's nothing to do. You're having a momentary experience called your life. It doesn't matter. It's just something that's passing. It's just something that's there. You know, how far off are the galaxies? Right? 15 billion light years. Will you please give me a sense of time? 186,000 miles a second, 15 billion years. That's a lot of time, isn't it? And you're going to worry about 80 or 100 years and create all this tension and all this neurosis about this unit, which is nothing. So you start to hang out with the eternal. And I don't mean in philosophy. I mean in everyday life. It doesn't mean you stop living your everyday life. Just as eternity exists, that which is within eternity exists. <laughs> right? Each moment of eternity is a moment in eternity. But that's what it is. You bring that consciousness and awareness into your daily events and into your lifetime. You can't miss anything. There is no end. There is no beginning, there is no end to you. Therefore, you can't miss anything. Nothing can go wrong. It's just on its way. It's just a wave that comes up and goes down. At any given point, it looks like, oh my God, look what it's doing. But that's because you're in time again. You're busy looking at, oh, it's been like this for so long. Look how long it's been like this. What are you doing measuring things? On what basis are you measuring it's been there long in relationship to 15 billion light years? <laughs> well, not exactly. And by the way, there's nothing sacred about 15 billion light years. That's just, what do they say, a day and a night of Brahma. That's just when we think the Big Bang took place. Nobody ever said nothing existed before the Big Bang. They don't touch that stuff. But nobody's saying that. Even the scientists don't say that. They say this universe and they mean the universe of form, the universe of matter, the universe as we know it, then they don't touch. <laughs> they don't even touch. In, in what substance or what field of play did the Big Bang take place that emanated all of this matter? They say, go talk to the philosophers. <laughs> I don't want to play with it. All right, whatever. The point is, there's no start or end there. It's just an event in eternity. That's not eternity. 15 billion light years is not eternity. It's just a blink of Brahma's eyes. This is how the ancient Upanishads wrote it. That's what's so beautiful. A day and a night of Brahma. Wow. Far out. Very beautiful. There is no time for you. There is no time for you. Time is the concept of a limited resource. There is no limited resource where time is concerned. The universe is eternal. The self is eternal. Eternal is experiencing eternal. So, what are you worried about? You see now why they say in the light of eternal, the ego can't exist. The personal self cannot exist. It doesn't know what to do with itself. It doesn't have a mission. I'm telling you. Its mission is to do something with this. You know, you have a life to live. What are you going to do with it, right? What did you do today? What's happening? How did you waste it? Just no, no, no. But what's funny is, if you begin to live in the eternal and realize that's all you're seeing, is nothing is anything except a moment in eternity. That's what the eternal is. That's how you live in the eternal. You know, how you live, it's amazing. You know how you live in the eternal? You think you would expand yourself to live in the eternal. Well, you can't possibly. It's eternal. That's not how you live in the eternal. You live in the eternal by living in the eternal now. That's how you live in the eternal. All that exists is now. It's just always now. It has always been. It will always be. So the particular now that you're experiencing is just one in eternity. At the same time, it's nothing and everything. That's like two great masters wrote a book called The Everything and the Nothing. You see it? If I bring you back 
to the now, it's all there is. There's nothing else. Everything else is your mind. The eternal is going on forever, and here it is. <laughs> this is. This is it going on forever, isn't it? There is no past. There is no future. There's just this going on for eternity. So, therefore, this is all that has meaning. But in truth, in the realm of the fact that it's not limited, it's not a limited resource, there'll always be one. Always be one of these. So don't worry about it. Then it has no meaning. If it's not a limited resource, what's the difference? You don't have to save it. You don't have to be careful about it. You don't have to be afraid of wasting it. In truth, you don't have to be afraid of anything. It's just the passing moment in eternity. It's just absolutely unbelievable. It'd be like if I put you way in outer space, in the middle of empty space, and you're just passing through empty space, and you start worrying about the space you just went through. Did I do it right? Did you do what right? Did I look good when I was passing it? Or I mean, what, what are you going to do here, man? It's like infinite empty space. You're just passing through it, and you're going to do something about the space you just passed through? Of course not. It's nothing. That's what time is. Nothing. Nothing. There can't be anything right. There can't be anything wrong. There can't be anything. It's just an experience. And there will always be an experience. Do you understand that? Always. The problem is, you think it's limited, and you define within your mind, we've been through this before, what you want the experience to be. That's it. You're dead. You're dead. The minute you do that, the minute you create limitations, duality, It's time is a limited resource with a beginning and an end. And there's things I want to happen in it and things I don't. Since it's limited, I better jam in the stuff I want and keep out the stuff I don't want. If it's infinite and you're guaranteed to have all of it, I don't care what order it comes in. (laughs) What's the difference? You're going to experience everything. It's going to be forever. Just enjoy the ride. But no, it's limited. And if it's limited... I'm going to fill it with what I want and keep out what I don't want, otherwise I'm not getting my money's worth. That's what creates ego. That part of you that takes on that job is ego. It's the personal self. And then it just starts doing what? Getting the rock. That's all it can do. Trying to figure out how to make it all be the way you want it to be and so on and so forth. If you want a lot of you, you know, I say, don't worry about your mind, let it be, but a lot of you secretly would love to stop the thing, all right? You will not stop it by fighting with it. You will never stop it by fighting with it. You should never fight with your mind. If you ever see yourself fighting with your mind, stop. It goes nowhere. It does nothing. This is not about fighting with your mind. This is not about fighting with your mind. It does not do any good at all. But if you want a clue about how to speed up the process, of having the thing get quieter, I'm giving it to you. Start to contemplate the eternal. Live in the eternal. Do not live in the limited space of time. You don't have any limits. The consciousness will always be. Period. Therefore, the way you do it, if you know it will always be, you just sit there and say, I don't care what's happening. Something's going to be happening. This is what's happening. That's all. Don't worry. There'll be plenty of opportunities. Like, okay, now I'm going to do your Disney World trip different. Remember how it got when I took you to Disney World? Now I'm going to take you to Disney World and say, don't even think about time. Whatever time you want to experience what you want to experience in these rides and different things you're doing, there is no limit to time. How would that change your experience? Quite a bit, wouldn't it? Isn't that neat how these underlying principles end up defining everything? It's like how you fertilize the plant and what soils it in. That's what determines the plant. (laughs) Okay, there's a lot going on down there. This thing about time and limited time is part of the root that grows the flower of the personal self. If you do not have that root, it cannot exist, it cannot grow, it cannot blossom in the atmosphere of eternity. And eternity means no limit. Not limited. That's good enough. Not limited. So when you bring that into the moment, what's, what's important is to be, still be able to live in the moment. You know, still be able to do what's happening. You do what's happening with a deep understanding behind 
that this is just what's happening. There. I didn't tell you not to do what's happening. You do what's happening with the understanding that this just happens to be what's happening. <laughs> right? that next, there'll be something else happening. Won't there? Hasn't there always been? There has been in your life, hasn't there? And you're telling you, you've got to go a little deeper until you understand there always has been. And you have always been here, and you will always be here at one level or another. All right? So there is no limit. It's not a problem. What is taking place is taking place. That's fine. You participate in it completely without any sense that you're missing something else. That has got to stop. Oh, look, I'm having to experience that. I could be experiencing something else. You, don't worry. There's plenty of time. You have any ride you want to go on later. To, you know, enjoy your walk between the rides. Enjoy waiting in line because you have infinite time. Enjoy the experience you're having no matter what it is, including I've got to bring it down in full circle, including if the experience you're having, everybody's running around trying to squeeze it within time. That's just like a ball game. You know, you're just playing a ball game. <laughs> okay? There's endings, and that's just how it works. But you're not in time. Even though that metric is happening in time, you are not in time. It's like you could be in a play and know that you're in a play, and the part you're playing plays a certain part and acts a certain way and has to deal with certain things. But you still know it's you doing that. You're transcendent to the part you're playing, aren't you? That is what this is. You are outside of time. You dwell in the eternal. That's all that is going on in you. This is forever. All of it. That's where you have to get. But no, my marriage is is limited. Some of the old, my kids, they're growing up and they'll be gone soon. It's limited. You shouldn't do that. There's been lots of kids. Been lots of experiences of kids. There will be billions and trillions eternal experiences in your consciousness. That's how it works. Just leave it at consciousness experience in the universe. So don't think that this is it. This is nothing. It's infinite. It's eternal. If you train yourself to think that way behind and to be that way, to feel that way behind, you can deal even with the limitations and stress of the everyday trying to fit it within the game, within the play we're playing, but yet inside know that even that is just a game that's happening in time and space. It doesn't matter. You're not afraid to play it. You're not afraid to win. You're not afraid to lose it. It doesn't make a difference. You're just on stage playing a part. That's how a yogi lives. That's the state of consciousness that you have to engender, that you have to build inside. One key word, eternal. You have to live in the eternal. It's something you're not used to contemplating. It's something you're not used to thinking about. You can do it in your everyday life. You don't have to leave or go anywhere. Just any time you find yourself starting to get up tight, starting to worry about what's happening in this time and space, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's optimized, doesn't matter, whatever it is, getting anxious, are you getting enough done, or is this, is that, anything, just say the word, eternal. Contemplate something that has no limits, that is outside, and realize that's where you are. You are in a space of eternal, of eternity. You are not in a space of a limited lifetime or of a limited day or anything like that. Even though you're in a body that has one, even though there's a clock that's showing hours, I don't know how to explain it to you. I'll do it one more time. You're in a play. You're playing a role in that play. You're really doing that. You're really dressed that way. You really act that way. You really interact with the characters that way. It's not that you're not. You are. Yet, you know you're you. Don't you? I mean, don't really lose yourself in the play and don't come back, right? I'm the lion or something, right? You know the part you're playing and you know you're you and you know you're going to go home and you know tomorrow there'll be another showing. You're on Broadway. There's a whole lot of showings. You have that consciousness. That's how the self interacts with everyday life. Exactly the way that an actor or actress interacts with the role that they're playing. They are in it. They put their whole being into it. They do the absolute best that they can. They play whatever neurotic role is given for them to play. As if it's real, they do every single bit of that. But at no time ever 
do they not know that they are the actor or actress playing that role? That is who you are. So the yogi and yogini comes into the stage of this life and knows they are eternal. Knows there is no beginning, there is no end. There has never been a beginning or an end. You must know that. Now come and play as if there is. And all of a sudden, you can do your best within it, but it's not touching you. And then it doesn't build your ego. Your ego is rooted from the deepest part of your being. From that root, it grows out. If in the deepest part of your being, it's seated and eternal, it cannot grow there. Your mind will stop. It'll, you won't even know what happened. Just all of a sudden, you won't have those thoughts anymore. They will not be doing that anymore. You won't feel the tensions anymore. You will have undercut the fertile soil which ego requires in order to grow by contemplating the eternal nature of your being, by contemplating the eternity of all things right now that are. You should always, I was telling somebody today, when you look at this world, when you're playing in a play, you know you're on stage. You always know you're on stage. The problem is God made such a good stage that it's hard to see the edges. If the stage was too big, you wouldn't know you were on stage. If you could see the edges, if, if around there in the corner it just was black like a frame, and over there it was too, and you could just see the edges of it, and you were just inside like a bubble of color, of things, and outside it was just infinitely black. And you could see the edges. I mean, imagine if outside the bubble was infinitely black. Who could ever imagine such a thing? Go out in the shuttle and take a look down at the bubble from the outside. It's just a bubble of color, of light, of form, floating around the middle of absolutely nowheres, isn't it? Go look at a star, any star when you go out tonight. Imagine one little piece of dirt spinning around that one star. It has to be much tinier than the star. Then look around its environment, will you please? The whole rest of the sky, for as far as you can see. That's your bubble, that tiny little thing with all the colors and all the shapes. And it does have edges, and they are black, and they are empty. And you're just inside this little spaceship, inside this little bubble floating through space. I'm going to... I'm going to take a bubble maker machine, okay? I'm going to go, but it's a really good bubble blower, and you're going to be in it. Just blow a bubble all around you, and then going to put it and float it throughout her space. And it's going to be a big enough bubble so you can walk around and you kind of forget you're inside a bubble. But you are. You are inside a bubble. Can you live your life knowing that? the same as an actor or an actress knows they're on stage. Now you're getting into, and I'll do it because they say the eternal and the infinite, now you're getting into the infinite. And and I don't have to do much because I already did it with time. Space is exactly the same. It's the same talk, (laughs) right? You think there's limited space. And so you start dealing with being in certain places and dealing with limited space. There's not. There's infinite space. It goes on forever. There's just one point in a continuum of infinity, isn't it? If you put your mind out to where you realize this little thing you're dealing with, where you are, where you live, who you're with, what you're doing, what you have, what you don't have, any of these things in form and time and space, put it in relationship to this bubble, and then please stretch yourself out by all means for all infinity. Right? Just keep going. And you say, there's a why would I care? What I have and what I don't have and where I live or where I don't live or who I'm with or who I'm not. He's like, give me a break. How picky are you going to get? There's a little bubble floating around the middle of nowhere. Doesn't mean you don't put your heart and soul into it like you would the play, right? But it's just a stage. That's all it is. It's just a stage. And there's infinite, infinite space going on forever, everywhere. If I had my way, you would bring the consciousness of eternity and infinity into your everyday life. I don't want it in your mind. I want it in your being. I want it in your the same level where you know that you know that you know that you're aware that you're aware. Without even thinking, do you know you're eternal? Without even contemplating or thinking, 
Do you feel the relative position? Right now, if you look at a person or a, a chair, anything, scientists and, and even psychologists will tell you this, your mind is always relating to things relatively. Big, small, etc. It's like the room helps to frame what the size of other things are. And right now, if I put that pillow somewhere, you say, it's a small pillow on the left. If I took that pillow and I put it in a tiny little room, you say, it's a big pillow in the center. Right? Your mind frames relative concepts. It happens like this. It's just instantaneous. You walk in, you feel the edges, and you frame everything. I want you to frame it all with infinity. That's your frame. Your mind, your being can learn to do that. Imagine if that is all the time without you doing anything. That's your frame of reference. Your frame of reference is infinity. It is infinite, isn't it? Then you're lying to yourself if your frame of reference is not infinity. Because the truth is the frame of reference is infinity. And if you walk into the room and the frame of reference is infinity, I guarantee you're going to have a very different experience. And if you walk in the room and the frame of reference is the room with some people looking at you. Again, eternity, infinity. The ego cannot exist in their realm. Do you see that? Can you at least get a taste of that when I talk like this? If you walked into wherever you're going and your frame of reference was infinity, I don't think you'd be having the problems you're having in your mind that you do every day, would you? And if you walked into every moment of every day and your frame of reference of time was eternity, you would not have the tensions and anxieties and fear of loss. You just wouldn't get uptight about it. You just wouldn't even be close. Because your frame of reference is big enough. That's the highest way that you can be done with mind. Now, the truth is, it'll go away by itself if you just let the events of the everyday life take place and let them gobble up whatever moves inside of you. You don't have to do anything. If you'd like to speed up the process a little bit, people want techniques, they want things they can do. Infinity and eternity. Those are things you can do. You can contemplate the infinite. It's not hard. We just did. It's not some philosophical thing. It's literally a contemplation of the infinite. Right? There, put where you are in relationship to what is. It's okay. It's a good use of the mind. Put where you are and what you're doing in relationship to the fact that all that is will always be and has always been to eternity. Those contemplations undercut the core, the root of the entire personal self. You will see it fall away if you hold to these things. As you hang out more in the self, in the witness, this will be natural to you because the witness is eternal and there are no limits to its scope. This is the true mysticism, the true spirituality is that which exists in the eternal and the infinite. It is, in the Buddhist sense, they talk about without duality. And I read you the third Zen Patriarch that time, right? It said, at any time you see anything going on, you feel anything, just say, not to. Well, what do you think infinite is? If it's infinite in all directions, without beginning or end, show me two. You can't. What do you think eternal is? If it has always been, always, and will always be, show me time. Show me two, two moments, two anything. You can't. You have to set up these relative, limited things, and that's what's meant by duality. This against this. And that's how the ego is born. And that's where she comes from. You can undercut that by spending some time contemplating the infinite and the eternal. These are very, very deep, deep, advanced things to work with and deal with. They are the teachings of all the great beings. But what I'm trying to bring home is they're not philosophies and you don't have to wait until you have some satori or samadhi experience. The self is already very comfortable with these things. The self knows eternity. It knows eternity. That's its nature. It knows the limitless 
boundless scope of infinity. That's its nature. So the more you hang out with the self, the more you will be comfortable with these things. But in the meantime, you can utilize your mind, since you're using it anyways, you're using it to limit, you can use it to expand. Mm, Jackard.